Hey everybody. Here we're looking at this battery operated cordless mixer that I picked up at Aldi earlier this year. I think it was either this year or late last year. Spent no more than I think 17 or 18 dollars for it so I wasn't really expecting a whole lot out of it. This was Aldi's version of I guess um, competing with KitchenAid's portable mixer. I picked it up because it was dirt cheap and of course I wasn't really expecting too much but decided I'd grab it and give it a shot. So it comes with the little beaters here and has a built-in rechargeable battery. Let's see if you can get the specs there. Okay. So you can see it's uh, 7.4 volts, so it has two lithium ion cells in series. And uh, let's just say I've used it a handful of times, and it's really not that old. It was manufactured in November of last year, 2022. Um, claims I have a three year warranty, but the thing is, for the price that I paid for it, it's like, you know, I could have sent it back. I did keep the box, and that was, that was something I had on my mind was maybe I should just send it back. But. If I sent it back, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to take it apart. So here we have it. And the thing is, yeah, this performance is not so good. Um, when I was baking zucchini bread and mixing up the batter for zucchini bread, it really struggled with that. With that and oh, forget chocolate chip cookies. Anything thick, it really struggled with. It hated it. And here's the thing. So it does still have some charge on it. Have a listen. Get that in there all the way. You can see on low speed, <clears throat> it spins those beaters quite quickly and it doesn't have a whole lot of power. It really doesn't, when, especially when you're dealing with batter. So it's like, you can see here, Um, it, there's no real good low torquey speed with this thing. It's just wide open and it doesn't take much at all to really slow it down. As a matter of fact, I can smell it right now. Um, the motor, for example, when I was uh, working with batter for, uh, for I think it was either zucchini bread or cookies, it was thick and it was really bogging the thing down. It just couldn't handle it. It killed the battery in no time flat. <clears throat> Obviously, the the biggest problem with this thing is it's the it's way over geared for the motor that it has in it. So I figured, why not let's try to take it apart and see if there's any kind of modifications we can do to this poor thing to make it a little less terrible. So let me go grab my. battery operated screwdriver that y'all probably see here on the channel all the time when I'm building computers and stuff like that which guess what is also an Aldi product <laughs> I've had this thing for years well if I can get into the screw I'll probably have to break out the actual screwdriver for a few of these. <clears throat> I am genuinely curious what's inside here. I mean, for $18, I'm not expecting a whole lot, so let's be honest here. Now, I don't know exactly for sure how this comes apart. But we'll just try to make do here with what we can. So I should mention it has a built-in USB Type-C charging port. They did not provide a charger. They did provide a USB cable though. So you could charge this off of a PC or um, 
a power brick that has, for example, a USB-C charging port. All right, let's see how hard it is to open this thing. It's one of those I'm not quite sure kind of deals, to be honest. Because <clears throat> we got this metal piece along here. Okay, so the back actually pops loose. The thing I want to be careful about is this thing has a lithium ion battery in there. I'm not sure if it's a LiPo pack or if it's 18650s, but oh, it's a uh, it looks like to be it looks to be 18650s, which we'll get in there in a moment. Okay. Had to go get a flashlight. So this ring here pops off, exposing some hidden screws. Okay, so if you have one of these and you're wanting to get inside of it, this back piece pops off first. So from initial looks, looking into the hole in the back of this thing, it's, I want to say it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And who knows, there could be some things I could do to help this thing out a little bit to make it where it could work a little bit better. Alright, so let's try to get in here. The first thing I want to do is try to disconnect the battery pack from everything else. Alright, so maybe the front also has to pop off. Yep. That's, yep, it, that's, that appears to be the case. Let me get a Dunner screwdriver so we can pop that front off. All right, so let's carefully pop this loose. And inside here, we have our gears. So the motor drives a worm gear which turns these two gears that operate the whisk, the beaters. And the whole case, I do believe, should just split apart. And of course we have a little uh, ejector for the whisk. I'm trying to carefully open this up here. And there's our battery pack. It's a uh, <laughs> INR pack. We'll talk about that in a moment, guys. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do right away, as soon as I can, is let's um, unplug. Well, first we want to unplug our charger port. Alright. So let's go in and unplug our battery. At least the um, power connections for the battery, which is right here. I can smell, I tell you what guys, I can smell the motor. It got, it got worked hard. Alright, so now we're in. Let's take a look at our circuit board. Let me disconnect this other wire to the battery. I think that's maybe a thermistor for the battery. Maybe it monitors the temperature of the battery. Or it could be for balancing. Actually, I think this little... So I get it loose. All right. So the battery. There are three wires on the main connector, and I think the center one is for balancing because it's a 2S battery pack. And we have this other lead here, which may be a thermistor. It may monitor the temperature of the battery when it's charging, which is I think a good design. Um, 
Now this battery, it claims to be an INR battery pack. I don't know if that's true. I think I'm, I was thinking maybe it might be an IMR because it's only 1500 milliamp hours. I mean, think about it. So for example, I got a brand new set of Samsung INR cells over at my desk that I use to power the storm cams for KubeConf MDDX and they are INR cells, but they're 3.5 amp hours or 3,500 milliamp hours. So quite a huge jump from 1,500. 1,500 is normally what you find in cells that are designed for high drain. So these hopefully are in fact high drain cells. I don't know if they're INR though. But anyways, so let's have a look at the electronics in this. So we have, um, oh, and it appears that everything here is uh, sealed up with a spray that they coat this stuff with to protect it from moisture and things like that. Normally you find this, you normally you find circuit boards that are uh, like an outdoor environment. So let's say, for example, a defrost board and a heat pump. They'll have stuff like that sprayed with this um, coating, which protects the circuit board from moisture and things like that. We have two 2045K parts, which I have to look those up. They're either transistors or MOSFETs or something like that for driving the motor. Um, kind of surprised they're not heat synced. We have a little microcontroller which runs the whole thing. It probably handles everything from um, sending a pulse width modulation signal to these um, FETs over here, which I'm, I'm assuming they're FETs, uh, to drive the motor, as well as handle the um, the charge status indicator, uh, or also battery um, battery level. And I want to say that we got some additional stuff on here that's in charge of charging the battery pack. One of these small tips I would say is responsible for um, acting as a BMS, monitoring voltages of the, of the battery pack and shutting off the mixer in the event something gets over discharged or it's about to get over discharged. So, give you a close look at it. I need to spin this around because I'm actually looking at it from a different angle. So that's the circuit board that runs this whole thing. Not much there. Which doesn't, there doesn't really need to be a whole bunch there, but and I'm kind of surprised they don't have a Kind of surprised they don't have heat sinks on those uh, FETs there. Because I imagine they get pretty hot when this motor gets loaded down. Now this motor appears to be a 540 sized motor. Yep, that's exactly what it is. It's a 540 sized motor with a worm gear attached to it. So course the worm gear drives these two um, well the motor itself has to spin to turn these uh, two gears that run the beaters on the mixer but the thing is though this motor is really whew, yeah I can I mean it smells like it got hot um, this motor oh yeah those windings look pretty dark around the commutator so if you look, you see it or not, this motor was intended for an application to where it's not super high torque, but um, high speed. So I'd say that the designers of this product, they made a bit of an error. Um, they should have used a motor that was um, had a higher turn of windings for lower speed. Yeah, lower speed but higher torque. If they did that, this mixer would have been perfect. So, the only issue I would have would be getting that worm gear off of there to install on a different motor. I mean, it could be doable, but I don't know. So, that's something I'll have to investigate off camera. So, there's the motor. 
in this thing. Again, the motor itself looks like it will be fit in, let's say, an RC car. Matter of fact, I got a Traxxas Stampede, and this kind of motor would drive that. And the thing is, with the Traxxas Stampede, the motor gets to spin at a much, much, much higher RPM. Whereas this thing, it's uh, the gear reduction is not adequate for this motor in particular. So if you happen to purchase one of these Ambiano cordless mixers and happen to burn it up, well, there's your problem. That's the issue. The, uh, the motor they chose for this product is not adequate. It's intended to spin at a higher RPM, and in the case where you need torque, there's supposed to be more of a gear reduction, which there's not a whole lot of gear reduction in something like this. So, anyways, guys, um, other than that, I'd say this product was built really well. I mean, the fact that everything has connectors, I didn't have to break out the soldering iron to take this apart. Everything has connectors. That's that's pretty good in my opinion, but they made a bit of an error on their choice of motor. So, that being said, yeah, that's that's really okay. Um, I think I made a little error earlier. So, this little dollar board here is not for the USB port. If I had mentioned that, it's not. It's actually for these LEDs. So, the USB C port is probably on the bottom. Yeah, it is on the bottom of this circuit board. So, anyways, that wraps up for this video. And if I have any updates on this thing, I'll definitely post them. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video from Cuckoo Channel. If this is your first time, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to tick the bell so we get notified of new video posts. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment and share this video as well as the channel with your friends and get the word out. Also, I have a second channel that's Cube Comp MTDX. Over there, you'll find videos about thunderstorms and weather, cycling, and videos about me personally. Feel free to subscribe over there as well if you like. Again, I really hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for your support.